Yes, I promise, I swear, I'll definitely make it happen. Absolutely for sure. There are a million ways we make promises with our words, but it doesn't always mean we'll follow through. Marriage vows get broken, business deals go south, and contracts end up in court. We see today in the book of Numbers, chapter six lays out the specifics of the Nazarite vow which was a way that people in the days of Moses could live a life of deeper devotion to God. As verse two states, they were setting themselves apart to the Lord in a special way, making a solemn promise to dedicate a certain amount of time to pursue God wholeheartedly. During this time, a person couldn't eat or drink anything that came from a grapevine. They couldn't cut their hair throughout the time of the vow, and they were instructed to not go near a dead body, even if it was their own father, mother, brother, or sister. And if for some reason you did break your vow, the clock started all over on your commitment. The Nazarites didn't play around with their promises. So let me ask you today, how seriously do you take the promises that you make to other people? You know, we can learn a lot from the Nazarites. And we see in Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, Jesus tells his followers to simply let their yes be a yes and their no be a no. Don't swear at all because anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Listen, God takes his promises to us very seriously. From the beginning of Genesis, he promised a savior to take care of all of us for eternity. And even though it meant that Jesus would have to die for us, God never broke his word because God's covenant with his believers is unbreakable. He's a promise maker and a promise keeper. As children of God, we can take comfort in knowing his words never fail. But we should be challenged by that statement as well. We are God's representatives on earth. And to represent him well, we have to be willing to say what we mean and to do what we say. Chapter six closes us out with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Here's the deal. This blessing isn't just a pretty poem. It isn't just a nice thing to say at the end of a worship service. It's the very heart of the gospel. It's a blessing far too valuable to keep to ourselves. And like Aaron, our job is to proclaim and deliver it because beyond what our eyes can see, God has blessings in store for each one of us. So today, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace.